Hello and welcome back. My name is Jeff and today we are going over some tips that I wish I knew before I started playing Little Big Workshop. The first tip is actually right here in the option settings, serious business mode. It removes random events and I know that seems like cheating, but there is a very good reason for that. Okay, so this is my factory and as you can see all over the ground, there's little mold spores and mushrooms and they get into every single room. The way I can remove the mold is by taking this item right here, placing it in one of these rooms over here and now that one of my guys has built it it is turned on and it is destroying all the mold in this room only this room so if i wanted to get every one of these little rooms taken care of i would have to remove the furniture from them place that in destroy the mold there and then rinse and repeat with every single room so that's not really feasible when you have a bunch of little cubbies like this. And little cubbies like this are probably the most efficient way to have workshops in this game. You just have one station and a decoration to keep your worker happy. And I think that is the best bang for your buck you can get out of rooms in this game. However, if you have random events, there are some factory designs that are entirely impossible because of random events so if you do not play with serious business mode on you will eventually come across a random event that will cripple your factory in some way or other in my case it was the mold and the mold basically makes it so i have to redo my entire factory like tear it down and rebuild it entirely which i don't have the time for no one does or basically just accept that i'm not going to be hugely profitable ever again because the mood is terrible in all my little cubbies. Tip number two, research and development. This actually took me an embarrassingly long time to realize, but there's a second tab here, and it has very valuable upgrades for your factory. Don't neglect it. Tip number three, rent. Every square meter of factory you build increases the amount of rent you owe every single day. So keep your factories as small as possible to keep them as efficient as possible. Having a giant factory floor like this, very, very expensive. I pay probably like 7000 per day on rent. Oh, uh, 6800 per day on rent. So yeah, don't build more factory unless you know what you're going to do with it. Tip number four, break rooms. The most efficient setup I've found so far is just a vending machine, a coffee maker, and a door. Don't add any of the extra furniture and whatnot. The reason I say this is vending machines and coffee makers, they both give you more a breakpoint cap and more breakpoints produced and they take very small amounts of space. Everything else that might be worth it requires a lot of space. The only notable exception is the radio. If you find a room where you can squeeze in a radio, might as well do that. Tip number four, markets. So you have the option of building basic, medium, or advanced objects, but by and large I found the only thing really worth doing is challenges because challenges tend to pay you a decent amount per item, but they also give you reputation and relations with each client. When you get more reputation with your clients, you get a higher chance of getting a special task, which pays an absurd amount. So that way you can build a factory specialized around, you know, two or three clients and their special tasks will get you a whole lot of money in very short order. Tip number five, diminishing returns. So you can see here we have four flower beds and each one provides less decoration and less mood than the next. So it is better to make smaller rooms and just having unique items like I do, like I did with the cubbies over here or like I did with the break rooms over here. Diminishing returns also applies to the items in the break rooms. If I built a second vending machine in here, it would only give me two break points and two uh, break cap. So it would not be worth it. It's more beneficial to just make a second room where you can put more of this stuff in and then just plop these little break rooms all over the place. I'm lazy, so I have mine like in all in one area. That's not great. It's better to have them sprinkled throughout your factory and that way your people can quickly access them and get back to work. But this is not a fantastic factory, as you can tell. <laughs> Tip number five, billboards. Billboards can be placed anywhere and they can link to anything from wherever they're at. So this billboard right here is linked to 18 machines spread throughout the factory. This one is linked to 36. So whenever I have to create a task, so whenever I need to assign a task to various people, all I have to do is go to my billboard room where all my billboards are at and just click on the appropriate billboard. 
The nice thing is you can actually make this a lot smaller because people don't need to walk or work in this area after you've set it up. At that point, you can li literally just make a small cubby set to the side with nothing but billboards. And that's all you will ever have to look at when making your market plans. And it is so much more convenient than having to run around and like, oh, I have a billboard over here. I have a billboard over here. Um, oh, I forgot where the cutting machines are. Oh, there's a billboard over here. You know, it will save you hours, literally hours of looking around your factory. Tip number six, zones. So whenever I make a storage area, I have the option to make it general storage, workstation input where I can link it to a workstation or a billboard. And that way people will put whatever items are assigned to that in that zone. And that way you can have the cheaper haulers moving stuff around rather than your more expensive operators. And that'll save you a lot of money. Or you can have an export zone, which has your people set things aside for export, which does make things faster, but I haven't found like any penalty for exporting things slowly. So it's mostly just a benefit of using your hauler's time effectively. Tip number seven, trophies. Whenever you get a significant accomplishment, like maxing out your relations with a client or mastering skills in wood, plastic, or metal, you get a trophy. And that trophy doubles the value of all decorations in the same room that it's in. However, they do suffer from diminishing returns, so I can't just put all my trophies in this one room and basically break the game that way. If it did work like that, I would have done it already and broken the game, but this factory is basically a lost cause unless I'm willing to tear it down, which I am not. It is too much work to do. <laughs> Tip number eight, the obstruction lens. In the top right, you have this option right here to see all the obstructions in the path, and you can see how objects have this red glow around them. If your workers try walking through anything with a red glow, they will walk very slowly. That makes a huge difference, and I learned that the hard way very early on in the game. Don't make the mistake of thinking your workers can walk through things. Everything obstructs them. Alright, thank you for joining me. My name's Jeff, and that has been 8 Things I Wish I Knew Before I Started Playing Little Big Workshop. Hope you have a nice day. Deuces.